Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into our PBEM challenge with the Devious Logic in Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. Boom, boom, boom. It is now December 19th, 1941. We're almost two weeks into the war, uh, and Logic has done quite well, I think, early on. He's really pressured us. Uh, he's got a nice submarine screen here around Pearl Harbor, which has caused us some problems. Now, I was going along and setting this up, and I thought, well, you know, let's talk about a few concepts or a few things that I'm doing uh, as I set this up. Uh, I'm doing it anyway, so we may as well. Um, okay, so I am in the repair yard or the repaired ship section uh, of the port here, and these are all of our ships that got damaged at Pearl Harbor in the initial bombing runs. Um, now, I have changed this, and I've changed it uh, for a reason, and I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, now, originally, I had a lot of these battleships. So we've got the West Virginia, Oklahoma, Arizona, Pennsylvania, California, Tennessee, a lot of big battleships in here that got damaged uh, in the initial Pearl Harbor bombings. Okay, well, I put them in the shipyard. All right. I've now rethought that, uh, and I'll do this sometimes. It just kind of depends on how much damage was done. But when I was looking over this list, this repair list, what I realized is if you look over here, repair shipyard, we have a capacity of 100,000, all right? When you start loading battleships in there, that gets eaten up very quickly. Um, you really can only put the battleships in and maybe a few cruisers, something like that. Um, and you get to that 100,000 very quickly. And we can see why. If we look at the West Virginia, for instance, and we look at its tonnage, that is 32,000 tons all on its own. All on its own. And so, you know, ultimately you put three of these in here and you've used all of your capacity. Well, Looking over this list, we had these five or these six in there, or five of the six in there, I believe, and we were right at capacity because a few of these <coughs> don't quite have the tonnage of the West Virginia. So we had five in there, I believe. Well, it was squeezing out all the rest of these ships, and we've got a lot of other things here. We've got cruisers, light cruisers, we've got a several destroyers, a submarine, uh, a lot of tenders and whatnot. And so I started playing around with these numbers and I thought, you know, these big battleships are not very important for you as the allies early on. Uh, you know, they're really used to go and bombard uh, landing spots. So when we start island hopping later on, we'll take big old battleship task force along with a carrier task force or two, and we'll just go bomb the living heck out of the Japanese on the island first before we land. Uh, as you've seen Lodrick doing in this game as he bombards places like Mersing. Uh, he's bombarded, you know, up and down Malaya. Uh, and done a really good job with that, and that helps, obviously, with your landing. Your troops get on, the, the enemy troops are all disoriented, but that's really what your battleships are for. Now, you can also, obviously, you're going to get into some surface combat with them, but, you know, uh, the carriers rule the sea out here. You know, by this, by World War II, really, with the advent of carriers, Battleships had lost their place as the preeminent, you know, naval vessel on the waters and were used more as I just described. Now, again, you know, you will get into some surface tussles and you want to make sure you have a few battleships in, the, in those task forces because they can do a massive amount of damage to an enemy surface fleet, but it'll be totally outmatched by a carrier fleet. All right, you get the idea if you're watching these videos. Um... And so what I decided to do, though, since we really don't have a priority on battleships right now or needing them, I've moved them all to the pier side. And what does that mean? Well, let's go to the West Virginia. If you look down here underneath its victory value, you see it was last hit, last hit by a 250 kilogram GP bomb. Okay, uh, it took some damage. You can see it took 41 system damage, 46 flood damage, and 27 engine damage. Okay, those are the basic three damage types that there are. Now, you also have fires, which means it's literally on fire, and so you can't start repairing it while it's on fire. 
uh, those ship repair guys are good, but we, we don't want them to have full-on fire retardant suits on. Well, they probably do anyway. But anyway, we're not going to send them straight into a fire to start working on the engines. Uh, and so fires are, you know, kind of almost a different category. It means it's actively on fire. Uh, this is the overall damage that's done. And, you know, much like everything else in this game, how amazing is it that they break it out into these three different kinds of damage? Uh, no other game gets into that level of detail not really um and in those three categories you actually have another ca separate category of each of those called major damage and what does major damage mean well you have different repair types you have um ready all right and if we put it on readiness they're going to try to repair it at the pier uh but this ship is ready to go if you need to get it out of here it can go at a moment's notice. You can put it in a task force and try any way to get it out of here. Now with flood damage, if it's over 50, you're taking a risk, right? Because the ship could just sink if you get it out of here. Um, and so readiness though, is gonna work on these numbers right here and start trying to knock those down, but it's gonna be slower than if you actually stand down the ship. So the first type is repair type. It's either readiness or stood down. Pretty easy concept, right? It's either ready to, to push out from port or you've actually moved, you've actually stood it down. You know, it's been lifted up out of the water. It's been moved potentially back to the shipyard, etc. So it's one of two types, readiness or stood down. If you do stand it down then, so with readiness, that's it. That's all you got to decide. But with stood down, you can have it repaired at the pier side, okay? You could have it repaired by a repair ship, and those are those air AR ships, all right? And so this is not really applicable at Pearl Harbor. You have a big old shipyard. Uh, so usually, usually you're not going to have a repair ship working on this because it's slower um, than putting it in the shipyard. Uh, it's a, I, It kind of goes back and forth. I usually consider it better than pier side. <clears throat> although you'll just have to look at the days. Let's, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. There we go, stood down. Let's go back to uh, pier. Whoop, that's the shipyard. Let's go back to pier side. Well, it's showing us 80 days, okay? Uh, repair ship is showing us 87 days. So in this case, you know, you would probably pick pier side, right? Um, and that just means it's the guys that, you know, uh, that's their ship. They have repairmen from the ship and whatnot, and they're working at it as it stood down. Um, <clears throat> so you do have these repair ships. Where do they come into play? Well, at a place like Suva, all right? So you would want to take these repair ships out to, and that's why they're a tender class, right? You want to take them out to a place like Suva that doesn't really have a repair yard that can, you know, fix anything that's of any kind of size. And so you take these repair ships out to Suva or some other port along the way where if you can't get back to the big ports with the shipyards, you can at least try to repair it it at that port uh, with the repair ship. But here it's not really applicable. Of course, the big one is shipyard. Now shipyard, you see this in white. This is the only mode that can repair major damage. So if you're in readiness mode, it does not repair major. If you are in stood down mode and it's either pier side or repair ship, it does not repair major. Only in the shipyard can you repair major. But what am I going to do here? I'm going to leave this at stood down pier side, all right? And we're going to try to get these battleships, uh, all six of them. Why do I keep, keep miscounting? I, I had to look at that again. Six of them, yes. Uh, we're going to try to get them just at the pier side up to a level of flotation, especially like the Tennessee here. Uh, we're going to try to get them up to a float level and a system level good enough to sail them back to San Francisco. Or alternatively, a lot of these ships start moving out. And this was the out of the shipyard. They get repaired. For instance, the Bagley it's only going to take two days to repair that uh, back in the shipyard. But if I put it on, let's say, readiness, uh, it takes one day, but it does have major damage. So we really need that to go into the shipyard. Let's say stood down pier side. Now, again, it takes one day. That hashtag tells you 
it's not going to repair the major damage. That's what that hash is. So you see pier side, um, back to the shipyard. Can the repair ship do it? I guess the repair ship can't fix the Bagley here. Uh, but anyway, we've got it back in the shipyard. In two days, all of this will be repaired, including the major damage. So as you can see, um, a lot of these things I've moved back into the shipyard. We're now up to 98,250. Let's look at the Jarvis. Um, now this does not have major damage. It's only just got some basic system damage. If we stood this down and put it in the shipyard, we'll go back. I don't think that put us over. It didn't. It's 99,000 now. Um, and you can see at pier side, these repairs that it's like doing on the Gridley take six days. We put it back in the shipyard for the Jarvis. It's only two days. Uh, and so, you know, when you're talking about repair, and I spent some time on this in the basic tutorials, but I think it's always, I think this is confusing to some people how this works. Basically, there's two different categories, either readiness mode or stood down mode. If you stand it down, you can either do pier side or shipyard or if there's a repair vessel, a repair tender in port, it can also do the repairs for you. Um, and it, you know, sometimes that can be advantage. Sometimes it's faster to do it at the pier side. It just depends. Um, okay, so look at all of the things now that, you know, instead of having these all at the pier side and the battleships clogging up the shipyard, we've sh we've flipped it. And now the battleships, you know, are trying to get uh, some minimal amount of repair. We put all of this stuff in the shipyard, and we've got a lot of stuff now that'll come out. And that will then open up more shipyard availability as this stuff comes out. Okay, so I just wanted to talk about that kind of basic concept. Another thing I'm doing at Pearl Harbor, and I will also often do this against very aggressive human players. Now, you don't know whether you're playing a very ag aggressive human player generally the first few days of the war. I mean, I guess you can get a kind of a sense of it. Um, but we know now two weeks into the war that Lodric's going to be very, very aggressive against our shipping. Um, and so... Everything that I have coming into port now has destroyer uh, escort. And you can see it here. I've got four big tankers, an AO, and what do I have along with it? I have a destroyer, the Balch. Now, this is out of Vancouver. So I had the Balch come out of Pearl Harbor and go meet this task force. And then I've got two Corvettes, the Quesnels. They actually are even better at anti-sub. We've got a four there and a four there. Another thing I'm doing as they come in, we're auto disbanding. Why am I doing that? And I'm doing it with every task force that's out here that's going to come into Pearl Harbor. I've now got at least one destroyer, in many cases two, uh, along with corvettes, etc. I try to have at least, at least eight, six to eight ASW points combined in these now against aggressive human player. So I've had them come out of Pearl Harbor and meet these task forces, or in some cases they were, you know, those Corvettes are out of Vancouver. They were with this to begin with. But I've sent another destroyer out here. Uh, we can look at this task force. Um, this one does not have one yet, and we've got a Japanese sub in the area. This one does. It's got two destroyers. It's got two tankers. We've also got a patrol gunboat out here that's got an anti-sub of two that I sent out. And what I'm doing is having it merge with this task force. So this also has protection. Uh, I just couldn't quite get to this one yet. Uh, but everything else should. And then we see one that doesn't. Um, but everything else I've sent out destroyed. Now I do. So you can see here, tanker AO two destroyers. Uh, I could turn one of these around to this, but I don't think I'm going to do that. He seems to be past his net. Um, but everything else I've tried to get destroyers into, and I'm having them all auto disband in Pearl Harbor. And as you can see, I've broken down almost everything as it's come into Pearl Harbor. And now we've got 109 ships in port. And you may say, why are you doing that? Well, the reason I'm doing it is I'm going to rebuild these task forces. I'm going to make them much bigger. 
uh, usually with at least six ships or six cargo ships in them. And every single one of them is going to have destroyer escort of some sort or some sort of anti-submarine uh, capability, whether that be patrol gunboats or destroyers or corvettes or whatever the case may be. I'm going to try to put one or two because ultimately right now, You've got destroyers and a lot of them here at Pearl Harbor. Now, I've sent a lot of them out, but you've still got some here. Oh, let's go to active ships. Um, you've still got a bunch of them here, as you see. As a matter of fact, let's just set one of these up, and we'll take the Perkins. It's got the lowest endurance. And this is something I talk about with um, your carrier in conjunction with your carrier's so let's do the Perkins. Heck, we'll just do the Perkins and Smith. We don't need them for anything right now. They both got a two ASW. Uh, so we've set up this ASW task force, right? Let's have it meet a task force. And we'll have it, is it this one? No, it's this one uh, that is just a lone tanker out here. So let's have it go try to meet that. And we'll have, then you have to click on merge. So it actually merges into that task force. And then if we go back out to the tanker here, uh, we've got it on auto disband. So at the start of the game, you've got all of these destroyers at Pearl Harbor, some that came in with the carrier, some that were already there, etc. You really don't have a big use for them when it comes to the carriers. Uh, you're not going to be out floating your carriers around because they're going to get destroyed. So they're going to turtle up here at Pearl Harbor for quite some time. So what do you do with these destroyers? Well, for one thing, they're not ultimately going to be the destroyers that go with the carriers. Uh, and why is that? Well, let's get over here because at uh, Balboa last turn, we received the first of the new class of United States carriers. I believe this is the Sims class. Let's look. Uh, Sims class. Yep. So this is the DD Sims. It's the Sims class. As you can see, they're the first American destroyers with four anti-submarine. Now, when you start the war, uh, you've got uh, British Corvettes that are a level four anti. And this is pretty much on zero to ten uh, or you could call it one to nine. You get the idea. It's kind of a 10 point scale. Uh, and so you start off <clears throat> as the allies with generally all twos. The Americans start out with all twos. The Brits do have some Corvettes that are fours and they've actually got some destroyers over in Singapore that are eights. All right, so they're fantastic. That's why I was lamenting losing the Vampire. The Vampire is an eight. It's one of your best uh, anti-sub uh, ships early in the game. Um, but now the U.S. has deployed over here through the Panama Canal these new Sims class destroyers. Uh, and they've also got a good amount of anti aircraft, 170. That's a, it's not quite the best you have on all your destroyers, but it's quite good. They've also got a speed of 35. These are the destroyers you're going to put with your carriers early on. Um, and so all of your other destroyers over here, uh, whoops, not in La Hue. I hope they're not there. All the ones in Pearl Harbor, if we click on those. Uh, so let's just go down here and look at some of these we have. Here's a representative uh, sample. Uh, Drayton, it's got a two. All right. It has a 159 anti-aircraft, so not quite as good as the new Sims class, which is 170. It's got a two anti-sub, and it's got a max speed of 34 as opposed to 35. Uh, it's also got a 70 on the maneuver. Let's see uh, the Sims class if that's better. I just don't remember if the maneuverability is better, but we're going to find out. Uh, maneuverability, 69. So they're, they're pretty similar. Let's get a little better top speed, a little better anti-aircraft, but this is the big one. Anti-sub goes to a four. And so these guys come straight out of uh, Balboa, the Panama Canal from the East Coast. They're going to sail through here, go to Pearl Harbor, and that's what you're going to put with your carriers. So you've got all of these destroyers, and what we're going to do is set up big cargo task forces as opposed to small ones as i'll do against the ai usually 
uh, against an aggressive human, you want to set up big ones. You usually put at least two uh, destroyers in there with it, or these Corvettes. We can look up here, the Corvettes, these are out of Vancouver, the Quesnel. You can see it doesn't really have anti-aircraft, it doesn't really have much of a top speed, uh, but that's okay, right? I mean, it's it's kind of going with uh, the tankers, so it doesn't have to have a big top speed. Um, but it's got the four anti-sub. Now you may say, well, gosh, it can't even make it there, right? It's got a very small endurance. Always keep in mind, especially with tankers, right? They've got a lot of fuel. They will share the fuel with any ships in their task force that don't have enough fuel. So don't be scared to send your destroyers, let's say, all the way to Australia. Uh, if they're along with ships that have a big enough endurance to get there, those ships will share their fuel with the ships that are in red that don't. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Um, now let's do a little retrospective on the last turn. Uh, you saw Lodric uh, sunk a few things, not nearly as many as he had sunk in previous turns, uh, and so hopefully we're going to stem the tide there. I've changed tactics quite a bit, and we'll go through that as we go through this map. Uh, but let's look at the intelligence report and see what happened uh, the last couple of days. We ran 48.20 in sorties. Uh, the Japanese ran almost 8,000 almost 8,000, so like 1.7 to 1 on the sorties. In the campaign, he's run double, essentially double the number of sorties we have. Air-to-air -air losses, we lost 31, we've lost 177 for the campaign. He lost six. This isn't good enough. We need to do better than that. Now, a lot of this is we're still trying to bomb some of his naval assets uh, with Dutch bombers unescorted. So they are going to get shot down at a pretty heavy rate, and that's what a lot of this is. They're going to get shot down, but that's okay. You're going to lose them anyway. Um, and so they're, you know, interwar bombers. I, I mean, I must say the Dutch bombers are probably better than the U.S. bombers right at the start, uh, but... You're going to lose them anyway. You may as well throw them into the inferno and try to get a, a you know a capital ship. They get lucky and hit it. So that's what a lot of this is. Nothing destroyed on the field either side. Nothing destroyed by flak on either side. I don't like that. I mean, I'd like to be knocking out two or three at least of the Japanese planes by flak. We just. Uh, didn't happen this turn. We have done okay so far, 47 to 4. Uh, of course, we're not running bombing missions out over land targets, so of course he's going to have more destroyed by flak. Uh, operational losses, this is much better. You can remember last turn, uh, we had what I considered a little high operational losses. Uh, he suffered 5 today. We've got a 121 for the operation, or for the campaign. I think that's a little high, and I've been looking around the map to figure out ways to uh, reduce that political points 228 so we can shift out some some things uh not a big infantry you know battalion potentially but we can do the smaller brigades regiments things like that with 228 we could also switch over some plane commands and or maybe buy out some planes from the u.s west coast which i have done a little of uh japanese score he's up to 4237 uh, doing quite well early on. We're maintaining uh, right here in the upper 10,000s. Uh, I usually like to be over 11,000 at the turn of the new year. Uh, we're not going to be there, uh, but we just don't want to let this slip below 10,000. That's a warning sign. Uh, now, after he takes Singapore and Manila, you know, we're going to get close. Uh, but, you know, 10,000 is kind of my, you know, don't go below the hard deck, uh, Maverick. Um, allied bases controlled. We're still at 566. He's at 270. You can see that's where we get the vast majority of our points. Uh, aircraft points lost. Now, we've lost 362. He's lost 212. Uh, so this should continue to even up, and then we should be making quite a good number of points off of aircraft because we're going to be playing completely defensively once those Dutch bombers are gone, and then we're just running cap. So we really should do better than him in the air or air to air just because uh ultimately he's got to try to protect bombers we don't and so we should get the better of him even though he's got better aircraft 
uh, there's going to be times, you know, that those escorts can't get away from us. Uh, you know, zeros against Buffaloes or against the Dutch aircraft uh, or even against, you know, early American fighters have the advantage, but they are trying to protect bombers. So, you know, that, that evens up uh, things quite a bit. Allied points loss, army points loss, so ground loss, so this is air losses. Ground losses, uh, we're getting chewed up there, and we've got to try to stem that tide, especially in places like China. Now, a lot of that is we're trying to get to certain defensive play, you know, uh, areas, and we just haven't gotten there yet, and so every time we get in a battle, we're on the we're not on the move. We're in combat mode, uh, but, you know, we're not set up in defensive fortifications. And so he's chewing us up in China and Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia to be expected, Philippines to be expected, but China, we got to start doing a little better. Allied ships sunk. This is a massive number for him early on. Uh, that's part of the reason I'm switching ta tactics now. Uh, some of this, some of it. Now, obviously, a lot of this is Pearl Harbor, but some of this is Manila, you know, and that was a little bit of function of the rules. But he's also done, not, you know, I don't want to take away, he's done a very, very good job of putting a net around uh, the Philippines, and that has led to a lot of losses. He's also done a good job down by Oosthaven, outside of Palembang, outside of Singapore, not allowing us to get out of there. A lot of times AI, the AI or a you know not very good human player will allow you to get out of there, and so that's why this number looks you know big, and it is big. I mean, it is big. Uh, just to be honest with you, um, let's go and look at the ship sunk last time, and uh, well, this is overall. This is overall, right? So we've got a lot of Pearl Harbor. Uh, we've got Maroc. Now, this just sunk this last turn. So let's just do it by turns now. Uh, you get the idea. There was a lot of stuff lost at Pearl Harbor and Manila. This was the big one, the Dominion Monarch. This was British. This uh, was taken down at Maroc. This was trying to come in and bring British troops to Batavia, Oosthaven, and uh, got sunk. That's 35 damn points. You can't lose ships like that. Uh, this tanker, uh, Commonwealth, um, was hit. I was sending this down to one of the islands that I call our Iron Ring uh, out of Pearl Harbor. It was uh, escorted, but it was still hit uh, by a to torpedo just off the southern coast of Hawaii. Uh, so he's getting in there close. That's 12 points. We had an AK that was hit uh, 12 points near Fanning Island. Now that's in between Palmyra and Christmas Island, the start of our Iron Ring or Iron Crescent uh, around the Pacific. Uh, so this was down by Fanning, a nice 12 point hit for him. The Sarjo was uh, sunk. Now this had been hit at uh, Manila. I was trying to get it out of the Philippines, even though it had a very high float problem. Uh, and it just eventually sunk. It didn't get hit again. It just, we were trying to get it back to Pearl Harbor, uh, and it just sunk. It had too much float damage. And then we lost several small uh, cargo ships, but these are normal losses. Uh, they're not to raise an eyebrow about, really. I mean, you're going to lose some of this stuff. Unfortunately, we don't show any Japanese losses for last time. Uh, if we go back... We could look what's uh, ship availability. Uh, you see the big one is the Yorktown is coming in in 11 days into San Diego. Those destroyers, I have come into San Diego first. They then escort out the Yorktown to Pearl Harbor. You can't mess around with that. Uh, losing a carrier this early in the game when you're already at a huge disadvantage for carriers, you need every single one of those much better destroyers to escort that out and even then send out things from Pearl Harbor to meet it and escort it in. I mean, you maybe want 12 or 14 destroyers, some cruisers, and who knows what else around this thing. Uh, in 82 days, we get the Hornet. Now, that'll be up in... Um, the Eastern U.S. block, and we'll go talk about the Eastern U.S. block here in a minute, uh, or base, uh, because I'm doing something a little different with that. And then you'll see we get the Wasp in June at Balboa, but then after that, after the Wasp, we don't get anything until the Essex in May of 43. And so, yeah, I mean, that's a long, long time until you get another carrier. This is the Essex class. It is a much better class of carrier. 
Um, and so we, but we don't get that till the middle of 1943. And then you see, I mean, we kind of get one every three or four months or so uh, until we build into 1945 when the U.S. just started firing, <laughs> you know, just started building carriers like crazy. Um, okay, so and you can see that all here. We can also see we get the Yorktown too. Actually, let's go this way. Let's get off of all ships. I was a little wrong about that. Hold on. Let's do the ETA this way. You do get the Yorktown 2 and a few other things in 43. Here we go. This is better. So you get two British uh, carriers, uh, one in 86 days, the formidable, the illustrious you get in April of 42. Then you see the Wasp. We talked about that. The Brits then, is that true? No, this is an American. Why wasn't the Victoria showing there? Hmm. It is Brit. That's what I thought. I was like, what, what is going on? Come on. Get it together. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Uh, the Victorious is a Brit. Okay, that's why we didn't see it. The Victorious is a Brit uh, British carrier. It just happens to show up at the Panama Canal. They sent it through the Atlantic. Okay, now, now I understand. Then we get the Essex. Then we start getting some of these light carriers. Uh, we also get the Yorktown 2 in July of 43. The Lexington 2 in July of 43 as well. Um, we get the Princeton, the Bella Wood, uh, the Independence. These light carriers, of course, go along with the carrier. You can use them on their own, just depending on what you're doing. Uh, but we start getting a lot, a lot of these light carriers that come in. All right, let's go back to all ships for a second. And we'll see what else we're getting. And you can see, as the Allies, that's why I try not to... I don't know, lament losing a few cargo ships uh, from here, you know, here and there. Because if you look down this list, it's just, you know, cargo, 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 tanker, cargo, you know. And, and like, you know, three days from now, look at all the ships we get in. Five days, you know, seven days, eight days. You can see all of the cargo ships that come in and it just keeps going and going and going. Um, we also get a lot of new British destroyers that come on in the next month or so. Uh, we get, you know, light cruiser here. We get a battleship, the British battleship, um, a British cruiser, so on and so forth. We could go through all this and then we get a, this is going to be big. We get more submarines. We need a lot more submarines because we lost a lot. I've actually got them just sitting in many cases at Pearl Harbor now till we build this back up. I like to send them out as wolf packs. I, I think they work better that way. Uh, you know, stealing from German doctrine there. So ship availability, you know, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, what do we have withdrawing? Uh, wrong way. Withdrawing. There we go. Uh, in February, we have the Joseph T. Dickman, which is a, a car or a transport that will withdraw. The Queen Elizabeth uh, will withdraw. As you can see, it's kind of every couple of months you lose something here, lose something there. Uh, whether it got transferred to the Atlantic or just got taken offline, uh, doesn't really matter. You can't use it anymore. Um, okay, I was going to talk about the Eastern uh, base here. Now, one thing that I am now doing, because he's being very aggressive, a lot of times I'll send the vast majority of freight uh, or supply and fuel through, you know, to Australia uh, through the Pacific, because it's just easier sometimes that way. Uh, what I'm starting to do, though, is set these up going from the U.S. East Coast, and you can see this has got 13,600. It just makes it. I mean, it's it's on the nose. It takes 340 to get to Cape Town and three, you know, it takes 170 to get to Cape Town, 170 to get back, 340 total. So I will start sending some ships. Now I'm still going to send things to Australia through the Pacific, but anything that's 13,600 or greater will be going from the Eastern U.S. to Cape Town and then Cape Town on to Perth. It's a little bit longer, I feel like, or, you know, it's a little bit more of a uh, a brain uh, teaser, but uh, you know we're gonna have it go through the pipes. They can't they can't get sunk when they go through the pipes, and uh, so it's gonna go from the eastern U.S. all the way to the other side of the map, Cape Town, through the pipes, as I call them, or the penalty box if you'd rather. Um, and so I'm gonna start setting up a lot, and you can see uh, we've got a lot of things coming into the East Coast here, a lot of different task forces that we've set up. If I can ever click on it, there we go. 
Um, these are actually all single ships, but you can see they've got that 13,600 endurance, 13,6, So, you know, we'll put the two 14,7s together, we'll put the 13,6s together, and before you know it, we'll have some decent sized task forces running out to Cape Town from the east coast of the U.S. Um, down here, uh, let's just talk about San Diego. Very, oh, and I will say, so Panama Canal, we got new ships there this time. Same idea. I'm sending all of those to the East Coast. You can see we really have, you know, moved most things off of the U.S. West Coast. I'm still running some anti-sub here, here, and here. These are your three main places coming off the U.S. West Coast. You know, San Diego, L.A., San Francisco, Seattle, Vancouver. Those are your three main spots on the U.S. West Coast. Uh, and I do, you can see, I've got submarines here. I've also got destroyers here. But I also have destroyers coming back into these bases, specifically into these bases, to then escort big task forces coming off of the West Coast with fuel and supply. We'll get those set up with destroyers um, and we'll use the, I use the lower endurance uh, earlier class destroyers to do that kind of work. You can see I've got a lot of anti-sub activity in here. Now, if we look at San Diego, I've moved a lot of planes down here and say, really, why, why do you have so many planes down here? These are the US uh, Fleet West planes that I have down here. Um, these I just transferred down here. Uh, let's look at this again. Why am I not seeing them? All? Oh, I've only got fighters on. Okay, so I put the fighters down here. Uh, I was like, why isn't that showing everything? These are all U.S. Navy Fleet Air West. I put all of those in San Diego. I have a few running ASW. As a matter of fact, I didn't set that one up right. I've got a few running ASW. And I've got a few running, so I put these on 50. Uh, the ones that have bigger range, 20, the, the uh, Catalinas, I have them do ASW sometimes at 3,000 feet, sometimes at 4,000 feet. Uh, so they're doing ASW. I have one group here, the Kingfishers, uh, doing search. I could actually have this Kingfisher because they've got such a low range that really it's better to have them do search. Let's try that, 190 to 280. Oh, he is on search. Whoops. Uh, these kingfishers are not. Yeah, it says they are, actually. I don't know why it's showing that ASW. Am I crazy? Uh, that's got a zero for ASW. Actually, I'll put that down at 5,000 feet. Uh, weird. Um, search. Well, it's an old game. Sometimes it happens. Search. Okay, I've got them both on search. I don't know. Uh, and I'm having them cover all of this area for naval search. And then I've got the Catalinas doing ASW out here because they've got a range of 20, which means for ASW it goes to a 10. Uh, and if I get on one of those, you can see that's going ASW all the way out here. Uh, and then this one's doing the whole spectrum. Um 190 to 300 so it's doing all that it's got 11 planes uh, so it can do that this one's only got four planes so it's doing this kind of more limited uh, most things are coming out of los angeles so i'm bringing it that way um and the reason i moved air west down here usn fleet air west air headquarters uh the headquarters is here uh and i needed to lessen some of the stuff at san francisco because i just had too much there if we look at san diego we're building forts uh, we're fine on air and port not building that we're building forts here uh aviation sport we only have 100 we need 115 i'm actually railing a base force down here to san francisco that has like 30 aviation sport so by two turns from now it'll have plenty of aviation sport um, if we look at the units we have here, these are all West Coast restricted. Now, the garrison's only 171. I'll bring more down here just in case he would get a wild hair and try to invade San Diego. Uh, you want to have like three or 400 at your four main locations. And then you want to have a decent, um, you know, 
little contingent at other places like Fort Ord. We've got this. This has got a 112 assault strength. So if you wanted to land south of San Francisco, let's say, uh, and I've got, you know, units kind of all along the coast. I've drug everything out of here. I've also got a training base back here in Boise. And back here in Boise, it's all the B-17 fortresses. So I train all my fortresses at a base back from the front. Um, that way, you know, they don't scare the populace. Uh, we've got just huge, huge B-17 groups coming, uh, training here in Boise. That'll wake you up in the morning when a big B-17 flies overhead. Uh, going to Los Angeles, as I, as the locals call it, not really. Uh, we've got uh, amphibious cores down. I've moved a lot of things down here. If we look at LA, uh, the assault strength right now is 448, but if we look at what's here, we've got uh, West Coast restricted stuff, but then we've got AA, North Pacific. This probably will go up to Alaska. Uh, Southwest Pacific, this is um, um, an artillery battalion. So this could go down to Nomaya, or it could go to Suva, someplace like that. Uh, we've got an engineering group that will want, will want to take out someplace. And you can see all of the ones that aren't restricted, I've already got them on Strat, they're going to get loaded on, including this headquarters, which is one amphib headquarters. Uh, you'll now see a transport that we have here that does not have enough range to get where it's going. What all is on this thing? Well, we've got infantry. We've got Coastal AA, we've got two fighter squadrons, and we've got a base force all headed to Nomaya. It's going through waypoints, so it will refuel as it goes through those waypoints. <clears throat> so that's a big transport group that I've got on its way. And as you can see, I've got a light cruiser and three destroyers with it. This is a very valuable task force. Uh, I think that goes without saying. Uh, and that big one, let's go look at that actually very quickly. If we look at the 161st that's loaded on here, it's on the Barnett 161st. It's only got part one of its group on here. This is a very strong uh, force. I think it ends up having a 171 combat strength, something like that. So that's going to be coming out of Los Angeles this time with a lot of escort. And it's going all the way to Nomaya. And as you can see, we were all in the red, but if we get out here, you can see where we go with it. Um, down, down south through Tahiti, through Auckland, and then up to Nomaya. Uh, it's going to refuel at all of those places. Don't put something there now, Lodric, uh, but that's where it's going to head. Um, other than that, uh, most of the ships are out of here. I have a few ships in port, but I'm going to wait for other things to come back. Uh, the Luckenbach, um, it can only upgrade. If we look at the port of Los Angeles, um, do I have any? Yeah, I do have here. All the Luckenbach generally, except for the one that was sitting there I just showed you, can uh, convert into tenders, and I have them all converting. So the Dorothy Luckenbach uh, will become an AG. Uh, it'll become an ammunition tender. Um, and you want to do that with any ship, really, American ship that you can, and eventually they will be very helpful when you invade things uh, to have enough ammunition. So I turn all of those into AGs. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that's Los Angeles. If we go up to San Francisco, I've only got a little yard patrol or <laughs> yard patrol. Yeah, it's a yard patrol, uh, floating around here. I have a local minesweeper floating around here. We do have two ships in port. They're both ACMs or mine tenders. Let's go back to active ships. Uh, they're both ACMs. And so they will be, uh, tending to our mines as we lay more and more around San Francisco, but pretty much everything's gotten out of here. You can see, I have a nice Nice destroyer presence here. Uh, nice destroyer presence here. Uh, I've got submarines here. These are the really low endurance submarines. If we look at them, they're always the S class. So the S28, that's what I use for my close in kind of anti, other anti sub work. Uh, that's San Francisco. There's not a whole lot more here. I've got fourth US bomber here. Uh, they're all training. These are all training. Um, even these fighters, the Warhawks, are in with the bombers, right? So they're training escort. Some of the fighters down here I have training sweep because they're not even part of the bomber group. They're part of the fourth fighter group. So I've got fourth fighter group at, <coughs> at LA Marchfield. 
I've got fourth bomber group here. Some of the B-17s I still have here if they're in fourth bomber group. Uh, but a lot of things I moved out. If we look at the troops that are here, almost all of them, well, looks like all of them uh, are West Coast restricted. Uh, for, this is 4th U.S. Bomber Command. That's why I have all of the 4th U.S. Bombers here. Uh, but they're all restricted. Anything that can move, I moved to Los Angeles, and I have it ship out of Los Angeles. Uh, I do cargo out of San Francisco, but I do troops, planes, everything like that out of Los Angeles. Uh, moving up. Okay, we go to Seattle. Uh, it's probably raining there. Let's check. Nope, just light clouds over Seattle. Uh, lucky day. What about Portland? Is it raining? Well, it's overcast. It's always overcast in Portland. Um, in Seattle, we've got, I believe this is second fighter uh, group. Yeah, two U.S. fighter command. These are not restricted. And we're going to get them out into the Pacific as soon as I can. I've got transports on the way. Uh, you've got 23, 23 more. 23 more, and then three. But this is kind of like the uh, uh, what the Germans called the the uh, the Stab or the Commander is in this uh, squadron. So it's only got three. But anyway, two U.S. fighter. This is the 31st PG. You can see Headquarters Squadron uh, right there. Uh, we are going to move these out. Now it's got five pilots. I bumped up all of the pilots. Actually, I need to get eight more there. So we've got 33 in here. While they're training, let's get as many into these craft as we can. We'll get eight new pilots in there. I do early in the game pick from any uh, they will train up. That's what we want. And so we've now got 33 pilots in each one of these. It cuts down on fatigue, but also these guys train. Uh, and then we will eventually uh, then, you know, get them out into other fighter groups as they train up. But uh, you may as well early on, you don't really have enough aircraft to do full, you know, train everybody. So uh, let's get those guys training and we'll beef up those squadrons. We'll also get them out of here. What units do we have here? Well, we have a lot of West Coast restricted. We do have the one North Pacific here. That will go to Alaska as soon as I get transports back in here. We've already had a lot of transports go to Alaska, so I'll wait for them to return. I'll put that on here. We'll put it somewhere out in the Hawaii, or, uh, Hawaiian. Alaskan uh, Island Range. Um, two U.S. Fighter Commands, so the command is actually here. I've got it on Strat. I've got that on Strat. They are ready to go when transports come on. Vancouver becomes really important for fuel. 280,000 in fuel out here. As you can see, we've got a minesweeper, a minesweeper, a local minesweeper out here. Uh, we've also got a few British fighter craft. Uh, I'm having them train now. Uh, eventually, they can just run cap over Vancouver and, and Seattle actually so they can do both uh, and then I've got some naval search going on outside of Victoria uh, the islands here where things will be passing through we've got some naval search going on there uh, we also brought an American base force over here I think this is maybe the one out of Spokane I just can't remember um, these guys are all restricted they're all in combat mode at target okay We'll probably want to beef that up a little bit. I do send a few things to Prince Rupert, so it's not as beefed up as normal. you'd normally see. Uh, we are building forts. We don't need to expand the port. I mean, you could, but why? You're never going to have that many uh, vessels in at Vancouver. It's all about tankers here, and we will put together massive tanker forces to go back to Vancouver from Pearl Harbor, uh, along with destroyer and corvette escort. And that's what this one was, right? Um, and, you know, I'm going to have it auto disband and we'll put this, you know, like these three ships will maybe be together. This has only got a speed of 14, um, but we'll put them together into big task forces with big escort and get them out of here. So anyway, I just wanted to update you on the game where we stand. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Logic obviously knows what he's doing. So it's going to be a battle. And I love that. That's what I wanted. And uh, we haven't been disappointed so far. A lot of action. More action in the first 10 days than you'll get against the AI sometimes in the first six months. So uh, fantastic. Anyway, Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.